Okay, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the process, how we get through um, getting to uh, order of magnitude estimation where we put a sticky note on the wall. Maybe you know what that means because you've done it. Maybe you don't know what that means because you haven't done it, but you'll get to do it this week where we actually look at the matrix and figure out where our risk is going to plot. That's a process, a facilitated process. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, how we get through that. Facilitation means making a process easier and in our case also more consistent. So it really is a key component of looking at our um, our dams and levees uh, from a, a programmatic standpoint. So facilitation in general, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the role the facilitator plays and what skills are necessary um, in order for a facilitator to lead a meeting to get to a risk answer. Um, describe the various levels uh, and types of facilitation um, and talk to you about the the knowledge that a facilitator must have about an agency's guidelines, which Adam has talked to you a little bit about earlier today. Um, and also identify um, the challenges that are associated with, with working with a diverse group of experts. Um, who here is a structural engineer? Great. Geotechs and geologists stand up. Great. Who works with H and H? Hydrology, hydro. Sit down. Hydrology, hydraulics. Great. Okay. Program people. Oh, cool. Oh, so Bart, did you raise your hand? There you go. Awesome. So lots of different brains are going to be in your room, and as a facilitator, you want to get all the ideas from those people and distill them down into getting. Um, an answer to plot on that matrix so we can look at prioritizing our portfolio. So again, facilitation is really focused on the process. The facilitator isn't expected to be a technical expert in every single piece um, of uh, a structure. Certainly, um, when you go into a risk analysis, um, it's usually a week long or 10 day process. Um, there are going to be a lot of people in that room that know more than the facilitator, but the facilitator's job is to get information out of every team member, have everybody thinking on the same page, and get everybody asking pertinent questions about that particular structure. Um, and it's an important role in, in every phase of our risk assessment, whether it's from screening level or whether it's after a project has been constructed and we're trying to determine whether the risk was actually reduced through that construction process. So you're serving as a facilitator, as the leader of a group, like I said, a diverse group of very smart people who have various levels of experience with, with a particular project or other projects. Um, part of facilitating that group make, is, means making sure prior to the meeting that everybody is prepared. So um, making sure that the group has all the, the pertinent and most up-to-date information and analyses that are available um, so that the facilitator can lead the team through a potential failure modes um, analysis. Um, the facilitator's job also is to allow and encourage um, viewpoints to be discussed in the room. So if we're talking about a geotechnical failure mode but a structural engineer has a question about um, a phase in that event tree or in the process um, that that structural engineer or or anybody in the room can ask a question and the whole group can can brainstorm about the answer. Um, so that um, encouraging of just open discussion and question questioning and answering is a, a really important part of facilitation. And then lastly, the facilitator also reviews and certifies the report. So making sure that the discussions that happen in the room are properly documented, that nothing gets glossed over or missed, or um, what, if somebody goes back and writes a portion of the report, but that's not really quite what was discussed in the room, that that's an opportunity for the facilitator to call out and say to the group, hey, you guys, is this really where we ended up? Um, because you're all, everybody who participates is, is accountable for, for where that risk gets plotted. So what are the skill sets necessary for a facilitator? Facilitator has to be objective, open-minded, be a good listener, be somewhat diplomatic. Um, so 
also has to help the group focus. Um, I don't really want to walk in front of that camera all the time um, <laughs> as I get unfocused. Um, so uh, these various um, questions and answers in the, in, the, in the room may lead to people wanting to go down rabbit holes that might not be appropriate for the level of detail of study that you're looking at. So as a facilitator, you may need to draw pull back a little bit and say, you know what, that's too deep in the weeds, let's, let's refocus, um, or let's save that discussion for later. Um, so with a very diverse gr group, there may be many discussions that need to happen. Facilitator has to kind of keep those um, all on the table and decide which ones are important, which ones to move forward. Um, again, uh, the facilitator isn't expected to be a technical expert in every component, but should be an expert in the process. So again, as part of that, knowing the agency guidelines and the procedures as they change is important. And at the core, at least, they seem to change, I don't know, every day, every few months. Um, so knowing where to go for the most recent documentation of how we're doing things is important. Um, a facilitator needs to lead the team through screening the potential failure modes to determine which ones are going to drive the risk and then develop those failure modes like Bart talked about into a, a full description um, so that you can start breaking down the step-by-step -step progression of a, a particular failure mode. So that means understanding all the parts of the uh, risk equation, so starting from the loading through to the consequence estimations. Um, understanding how to use the risk calculation tools, we'll talk about those throughout the week. Um, and understanding the uncertainty um, of the different components and whether any additional study, whether that's actual like getting boots on the ground and, and investigating something or doing more of a analytical study um, would actually help us narrow down the answer or change the answer in terms of that sticky note, whether it would change the, um, you know, getting additional information would change where that probability plots or where the consequences plots. So the best way to learn how to be a facilitator is to do it, is to participate. Um, so be uh, on a team, identify what, what facilitation skills seem to work in different groups, um, and see what fits with your personality. So learn by doing. There isn't really a course that teaches you how to be a great facilitator, at least not one that we offer. You just have to learn OJT. Um, Participate in as many risk assessments at various levels as you can. Um, but as a minimum, our facilitators are generally licensed engineers or uh, geologists that have a diverse experience in dam, dam and levee safety um, and have, have participated in at least a couple of risk assessments. The more, the better. Um, and participate actively both in discussions and in the writing and the presentation of results. So there are plenty of opportunities for developing these skills, including this course. Um, you know, brushing up on understanding the guidelines is always a good idea. Um, and then active participation, like I talked about, on risk assessment teams where you're participating in elicitation, providing your estimations for probability of failures, discussing consequence um, components of a project, and um, learning from others. So as a facilitator, you're responsible for coordinating efforts within the multidisciplinary team, but then also from outside of the team uh, or bringing people from the outside into the team. So like we talked about with owner operators or sponsors, um, the facilitator often can be that conduit to, to make sure that those people on the outside have the, the, the capability to discuss um, with the team as we're going through risk assessments. Often having those people on the phone or in the room is really helpful because they can say, well, when we had that flood back in 1997, that's not how we intervened. And that might change your whole discussion about um, consequences and, and intervention, just an example. Um, so again, this is kind of more of the same and make sure you're 
methodologies are up to date, um, and our whole goal is to be consistent ac across our program and across other programs with other agencies so that when we're plotting something on our risk matrix, it makes sense in the whole context of, of our portfolio and, and um, other dam and levy safety projects in general. Um, the facilitator's job is also to look at the makeup of the team and make sure you have the right people on the bus. If you don't, you may need to get a bigger bus or you may need to kick some people off the bus um, that are making trouble. Um, that's actually not really true, but, but you do have to sort of um, make sure that the, that the voices in the room are balanced. Everybody has an opportunity to speak. Many of us are introverts. Many of you guys have probably looked more at my shoes than my eyes today. That's okay. It doesn't, being an introvert doesn't mean you don't have nothing to say. So the facilitator's job is to draw that out. Um, also make sure that the team is clear on how they're building the case for what the answer is, how they're justifying with actual data if it's available um, to document why you're getting to the answer that you got to. And then also um, participate and present results to management. So there are various types of facilitations at various scales of um, analysis. So Bart talked about potential failure modes analysis, which is kind of the broad brush. Then we go to um, screening those out, plotting them on the matrix, determining which, um, you know, what, what we need to do in terms of um, priority. And then if projects are plotting high, at high risk, um, high DSAC or LSAC classifications, we might need to think about, oh, we need to, to do a higher level study to determine whether we really can buy down, um, buy down that risk. So those um, are co called comprehensive facility reviews at reclamation or at the core, we call those issue evaluation studies or, if, or on to dam safety modification studies. Scott. TVA also does SQRAs. Thank you. So facilitators are super important. You're going to get a pretty uh, good introduction through various exercises and then also through various presenters, what kind of facilita facilitation styles there are out there, what's effective for different, um, different types of groups, different types of studies. Um, so you'll get some exposure to that this week, but you just got to jump in um, and get as much experience in risk assessment as you can um, to combine skills and be able to work on these teams to serve as the, the team captain to get to uh, an appropriate risk answer. Um, so that's kind of it on facilitation. If anybody has any questions. <laughs> 